Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Eve Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today I am going to dive into some tips and tricks that I have learned about this Onefinity CNC machine that has really upped my game and really made the using of the machine just a little bit more pleasurable. Now I will tell you that the machine is pleasurable to use anyway. It is super easy to use, it is super fun to use. But these tips and tricks really allow me to take my machine to the next level. Now some of these these things are cosmetic, some of them are just convenience things, but they're just things maybe that you might not know about that you might want to do with your machine. And so I just thought I would share the things that I've learned along the way. So let's go ahead and let's jump right in. So the first tip that I want to discuss is something that is relatively unique to the Onefinity CNC, and that is the use of this gamepad or game controller to move your machine around. So if you don't know this, when you turn your machine on, the first thing it wants you to do is to home the machine. And if your machine is pretty far away from its home location, this could take a fair bit of time. But something that I discovered, once the machine is turned on and the motor are locked in, you can actually use this game controller to move your machine around before it is homed. Now you need to be careful about this because it is not homed, it doesn't know where its outer limits are, so you can crash the machine into the front or the back or the left or the right. But if your machine is uh, maybe in the middle like where mine is right now or maybe all the way at the back, which is where I usually store my machine so that I have access to the wasteboard, then uh, what I end up doing is I turn the machine on, I turn the controller on, and then I move the machine close to the front home position, and then I allow it to home from there. It just speeds things up tremendously whenever I'm getting set up. And so this is something, again, that is relatively unique to the Onefinity because I haven't seen any other machines that have a controller like this, at least in the hobbyist range. So I think it's really cool that you can actually control the machine that way and then just go ahead and initiate the homing function. So the next tip that I want to cover, some of the astute video watchers who just watched the last clip might have picked up on, and that is the ability to fully customize your boot screen on the Onefinity. So if you noticed in the last clip, as I was powering up my machine, it had my logo on the screen rather than the stock Onefinity booting screen. Screen. And so this is super easy to change. It does require a little bit of twiddling around inside the Raspberry Pi that is used in the controller here. So if you're comfortable with that, I will walk you through the process very quickly. So what you need to do is create a custom splash screen image around 4,000 by 2,100 pixels. And I will leave the exact dimensions down in the description here. And then what you need to do is upload that image to the Raspberry Pi and replace place the default image in the themes folder in the build botics area where it executes the code. That exact URL is right here. You can put it in that folder and replace the splash.png with whatever image that you want. Future video editing Tom here, breaking in with a word of caution. Making any of these changes might void your warranty, might brick your controller, and might make your machine unusable. So if you do choose to make some of these changes, please do so with caution and take great care. All right, thanks, back to the video. It does have to be named splash.png, so what I would recommend you doing is just copying the existing Onefinity image to a new name and then uh, dropping your file into that location just in case you want to roll back for some reason or another or if during a some sort of software upgrade for the Onefinity that it replaces it, then you will have your file there as well. So the process does require some knowledge of Unix and uh, remoting into your controller. So if you're not comfortable with that, uh, then maybe it's a, maybe a bridge too far for some folks, but it's a nice little feature that I like on my machine. It just gives me a warm and fuzzy when I power it on. And um, you know, who doesn't like customizing their things? On to the next tip and trick. And so if you are enjoying this video and you like this, please consider go ahead and smashing that like button right now. I would really appreciate it. So the next tip or trick is these tramming bolts that come with Onefinity. Now this is something that is unique to the Onefinity because of the way the machine is made. I am not aware of any other hobbyist level machines that have something like this. But what these bolts allow you to do is to tilt your, your Z axis forward and backward while you're tramming. 
And so this could be really useful if you want a completely flat waste board. So the way these bolts work is you use them in pairs. And so you loosen the one on the bottom and tighten the one on the top will push it back a little bit. Whereas if you loosen the one on the top and tighten the one on the bottom, it'll pull the machine forward a little bit. And that'll allow you to precisely adjust the Y and Z axis during the tramming process. So once again, this should make things a lot easier than some of the other machines where you have to maybe twiddle with the entire Z gantry here, which can be hard to do and hard to get accurate while you're tightening the bolts and trying to hold the machine in the position. So this is definitely something that I think is really cool about the Onefinity. So the next tip that I want to cover is something that is also relatively unique to the Onefinity and the BuildBotics controller, and that is the fact that it has a network interface built into it. It has both wired Ethernet as well as wireless Wi-Fi. And so if you are not using the Wi-Fi or the wired Ethernet components of your controller, I highly recommend it. I recommend using the network interface because it does allow you to remotely control your machine from a computer or even from from a phone. And so if you are not near your machine and you want to do some operations for it, or more importantly, if you want to upload your G code directly from your computer to the machine, if the computer is not close to the machine, and you don't want to have to use a flash card or one of the memory sticks, then you can attach it to your network and you can remote in your machine that way. Also, the previous tip that I mentioned about replacing the splash screen, you do need to have file system access to your Onefinity. And so the easiest way to do that is to do it through the remote network interface. Now I use this remote interface a lot. Generally speaking, I only jog the machine with the user interface here when I'm zeroing the machine right up next against it. Uh, when I am uploading G code or whenever I'm doing something more intensive, like adjusting some of the settings, I will do that remotely using my computer Computer. It just has a bigger screen. It's easier to use with the mouse and the keyboard than with the soft keyboard here on the remote interface. But nevertheless, if you don't have the network connected, it is a completely usable machine. It's not a big deal. It's just a feature that I think is really valuable and it is actually one of the things that uh, kind of drew me to the Onefinity over some of the other machines that were on the market at the time. The next tip comes in the form of this manual data interface for the Onefinity. Now this is not unique to the Onefinity per se, other machines do allow you to manually enter G-code, but what is unique to the Onefinity is having it right here on the screen right next to your machine. So if there's something you need to do with your machine that requires some sort of precise operation that these keypad buttons here don't allow you to do, then you can manually enter G-code here and then get your machine to go to a very precise location. Now, if you're interested in doing this, I did do a full video, not only on the manual data interface, but also on how to craft your G code. So I will link that above and link that below if you are interested in that. Well, we've come to the end of this video and I hope that you have learned something about your machine and some cool things that you can use to customize your Onefinity. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far and don't forget to be inspired. All right, so on to the next tip. If you are enjoying this video so far, please consider hitting the thumbs up button. Thumbs up button? No.